The movie opens with an interview with Marie Colvin, a war correspondent, reflecting on her career and the impact of her work. As she speaks, scenes of cities and ruins are shown. Marie is lying on the bed looking at David as he is writing. She comments about his writing and the conversation shifts to their relationship with Marie, jokingly suggesting they get married again and go sailing. She expresses a desire to try for a baby again, but David is hesitant, pointing out her age. In the office, a new employee named Kate helps Marie with her computer and expresses admiration for her work. Sean came, asking Marie to go to Palestine instead of Sri Lanka, where she was planning to report on the conflict. Sean cites the danger in Sri Lanka, warning that the government could kill her if caught. Marie insists on going to Sri Lanka due to the unreported war and her interview with a Tamil rebel leader. In Sri Lanka, Marie Colvin speaks with a leader about the government's refusal to allow UN aid through their siege lines. The leader urges Marie to let the world know that the Tamil Tigers are willing to negotiate for a political settlement and demand equal rights. However, Marie is focused on the humanitarian crisis, highlighting that half of the population is starving while the other half is sick. Then he took her to a tent that is full of sick and wounded people. As Marie was about to leave, the Sri Lankan army attacked her and her crew. She got up to show them that she was not armed and that she was a journalist, but an RPG was fired at her, causing her to fall down with blood on her left eye. She was taken to the hospital, but she ended up losing her left eye. Marie Colvin is having dinner with her friends at her house. She recounts her hospital experience, and they show her the notes from fans and Tamils wishing her a speedy recovery. Her friends jokingly suggest that she starts wearing an eye patch, referencing famous figures who did so. Marie attended a party held to honor her as Foreign Correspondent of the Year, wearing an eye patch. Sean approached her and reassured her of her value to the paper, indicating she was their best asset on the foreign desk. Marie questions were, indicating she's not retiring, to which Sean responds positively, indicating they're still on the same page. David and Marie are returning home from the party. Marie asks David about nightmares from his time in the field. He told her he does mention Bosnia and Serb soldiers posing with decapitated heads and admits he still has nightmares sometimes. Marie then brings up a girl David met at the party, implying he got her number. David brushes off the topic, and Mary expresses frustration with David's lack of respect. David criticizes Marie for continuing her dangerous work despite his warnings, and Marie retorts, telling him to leave her alone. Marie arrives in Iraq and is greeted by Murad. They chat briefly before Marie mentions they will be late, and she wants to pick something up in the green zone before heading to Fallujah. Then they go into his car. Marie meets a photographer named Paul. Marie asks him to come along as her photographer to Fallujah. Paul expresses concern about the danger, but Marie reassures him, and they agree to go together. Marie calls Sean to discuss a lead from Ferris about a mass grave near Lake Habania. She explains the urgency of the situation and the need to reach the site before the American advance. Sean suggests focusing on the Ramadi story about Saddam's men working with Al-Qaeda, but Marie insists on the mass grave lead. Sean agrees to her plan and asks her to call him when she finds more information. Marie and Paul are stopped by soldiers, and Murad tells them that the soldiers are likely Saddam's police or militia, and not American. The soldiers question them, and Marie claims they are aid workers there to assist doctors in Lake Habania. She shows them her gym card, attempting to pass it off as a nurse identification card since the soldiers don't speak English. The soldiers order them to turn around, indicating that they are not welcome and suggesting that doctors are not needed where they are going. However, they let them pass. Marie watches as an excavator digs a mass grave, urging people to gather individual stories. As she does this, authors arrive and tell them to stop, leading to a confrontation. During the commotion, the excavator unearths skulls, causing a woman to start crying. They sat and watched as each set of remains was dug up and taken for a proper funeral. In their hotel, Kate raises a question about their reporting, asking if they are selling a phony war, to which Marie advises her to focus on the human stories and the truth of the situation, emphasizing that connecting with people's stories is what truly matters. Marie experiences PTSD symptoms as she writes her report, triggered by flashbacks of the traumatic events she witnessed before. Marie calls Rita to tell her her distress, explaining that she can't visit as planned because she's haunted by memories of a lifeless child's body, specifically a girl who appears in her thoughts. Marie and Rita are in a boat, and Marie throws her phone angrily because Sean was calling her repeatedly. Rita tries to have a serious conversation with Marie about her well-being, suggesting that she might have post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Marie dismisses the idea, stating that PTSD is something only soldiers get. Rita insists that witnessing traumatic events, like a car accident, can also cause PTSD and encourages Marie to seek help. Paul and Marie are having a conversation about Marie's past and her struggles. Paul asks about where she grew up, and Marie shows him a picture of her father, explaining that he never understood her independent nature. She opens up about her struggles, including her father's death, her relationship with her mother, her desire to be a mother despite miscarriages, and her fears
fears of growing old and dying young. She admits to using alcohol to cope with the chatter in her head and her addiction to being in war zones. Paul tries to explain how trauma affects the brain and encourages Marie to take her experiences seriously. Sean visits Marie, bringing her flowers. He expresses concern for her well-being and acknowledges her talent for making people care. Sean refuses to send her back into the field, saying she's not ready and suggesting she needs a psychiatrist to testify to her sanity. He reassures her that her position on the foreign team is secure. Marie visits a war zone and witnesses many injuries, including children. As she was writing, Paul interrupts to inform her that a checkpoint outside Lashkargah has been attacked by the Taliban, firing on civilians. Despite the risk, they decide to proceed to the location. Tony gives a speech at a party, thanking the guests for attending their fourth annual End of Dry January party. He recalls a wild night in Milan four Decembers ago and how he's decided to lay off alcohol and other substances in January. He expresses gratitude for being alive and toasts to the guests' health and vitality. Rita is preparing to leave, explaining that she needs to be up early to make breakfast for Chloe. Marie tries to convince her to stay a bit longer, but Rita declines. Rita showed her concerns about Marie's drinking habits. The next morning, Marie has breakfast with Tony, who mentions she was having nightmares, but she brushes it off, saying she doesn't have nightmares. They then hear a news report about the war in Libya on TV. Marie speaks with a man who was asked to rape a girl. Shortly after, an attack occurred, and they ran to escape. Marie and Paul run for their life. Back at the hotel, Marie is safe and talking to Sean, who is worried about her. He asks if she has seen his text about reporters being targeted. After ending the call, she hears about an RPG attack. She goes to see who was hurt and finds Norm dead. Paul came and found Marie on the roof. He got her down and they went to her room. She got cleaned while telling Paul about Norm. Marie met with Gaddafi. Gaddafi claimed that the Libyan youth were being drugged by Al-Qaeda to rise up against him and that he was the true leader of the revolution. Marie challenged him, suggesting that his actions were sinking the country into civil war, finance bloodshed, and ultimately failed to gain international recognition. Later, there was a riot against Gaddafi, resulting in his death. Mary wrote her report about it, highlighting how he called his enemies rats and targeted women and children. Despite his previous image as a strong leader, Gaddafi's dictatorship ended in ignominy and death, comparing him to a big game trophy brought down in the wild. Marie is having a meal with Sean, who remarks on her recent quietness and lack of stories since October. He suggests she might have fallen in love again, referring to Tony. Marie reveals she has nightmares every night, describing a recurring dream of running to a house that's now destroyed, filled with mutilated bodies. She confronts Sean about his actions during Libya, accusing him of not trusting her and sending Kate as insurance. Sean apologizes, but Marie abruptly ends the conversation and gets up to leave. Sean followed her out and confronted Marie. Sean defended himself, saying he had to cover himself because Marie was unpredictable. Marie mentioned David Blundy, who had a job that she took and later died in San Salvador. She also mentioned Joao Silva, who lost both legs in Afghanistan, and Safa Abu Saif, a 12-year-old Palestinian girl killed by a stray bullet. She questioned Xi'an's purpose and dedication, suggesting she sees the harsh realities of the world so others don't have to, but also because she can't imagine a world where she doesn't. He acknowledged that while no one in their right mind would do what she does, her conviction gives hope to others. Marie went to Syria. She is speaking with Abu Zaida, a member of the Free Syrian Army. She is gathering information about the situation in Syria, particularly regarding the shelling of civilian areas by government forces. Abu Zaida provides details about the shelling, the number of troops involved, and the civilians trapped in the area. Marie is determined to go out and report on the situation to the world. Despite the dangers involved, they get out and Marie and her team face gunfire but escape unharmed. They visit a refugee camp where a doctor informs them of the worsening situation. Marie interviews a woman who survived being trapped under rubble with her five-year-old daughter. The woman shares her story, expressing her desire for the world to know about her loss and the impact of the war. In the hospital, Marie witnesses a dire situation with numerous people arriving with wounds. There are few doctors, and one veterinarian is compelled to treat humans due to the shortage of medical personnel. He told her the hospital lacks essential medicines, exacerbating the crisis. Among the patients is a little boy who tragically does not survive. Marie sends her report to Sean. Sean's concern for her well-being since the location is risky. Marie and Paul are warned of an imminent attack and prepare to leave with the Free Syrian Army. However, Marie decides to go back, emphasizing that there are 28,000 people still trapped and they cannot abandon them. Paul tries to stop her, acknowledging her bravery and journalistic instincts, but expressing concern that they will die if they return. Marie insists on going back herself, telling Paul to leave without her. Marie expresses her desire to broadcast despite Sean's concern for her safety. She also mentions wanting to return to the hospital for more video footage. However, their conversation 
conversation gets disconnected before they can finish. Paul managed to fix the connection, and Sean tells Marie that Channel 4, BBC, and CNN all want to broadcast her report. He emphasizes that she must leave at the first opportunity, however their conversation gets disconnected again before she answers. Marie started broadcasting. The reporter asked her what she was doing there, since it is a very dangerous place. She emphasized the plight of 28,000 trapped civilians, including women and children, who were cold, hungry, and defenseless. Marie described the devastation caused by the Syrian regime's attacks, refuting their claims of targeting only terrorist groups. She stressed that every civilian house had been hit, with no military targets in sight, labeling the regime's statements as a complete and utter lie. During the interview, Marie expressed that the conflict in Syria was the worst she had ever seen, stemming from a peaceful uprising crushed by violence. She noted President Assad's response, drawing parallels to his father's actions in the past, including shelling the city of Hama and killing thousands of civilians. The reporter thanked her, and they ended the call. As the explosions intensified, Paul urged Marie to leave the building, which served as a media center. Amidst the chaos, the street was engulfed in blasts, leaving Paul injured and traumatized. When Paul regained consciousness, he discovered that Marie and Remy had been killed by the explosions and the resulting collapse of rubble. The film concludes with harrowing scenes of the ravaged city of Homs, underscoring the grim reality of the conflict. It closes with a real interview featuring Marie Colvin, who asserts, you're never going to get to where you're going if you acknowledge fear. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.